In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw and paint Suffolk sheep. Hi everyone, I'm Mike, and this is The Sunday Art Show. So I'm actually going to draw the sheep onto this pre-prepared background. This is an acrylic landscape painting I started some months ago. I've used some conventional acrylic and this is a fluorescent colour I've used here, which is why it's kind of such a vibrant yellowy yellows and blues going on. And what I do is um, for this particular painting, I kind of stopped before completion. It wasn't quite the direction I wanted to go at the time. But whenever I do that, I just pop um, the half finished painting into a folder and uh, you know come back to it maybe months or years later when I can see uh, an application and today is the day. So I'm using this UniPin fine line marker. It's a 0.3 millimeter nib to draw. And uh, let's get going. I'll show you my reference up on the screen. So the reason I chose the back this background is I thought the yellow would make a really striking contrast with the black head of these Suffolk sheep. So here's the curve of the top of the head. And then if we sort of try and break the, the head down into simple shapes, you can think of the top of the head, it's almost like a curved cylinder. So it's just a curved cylinder going there. And then obviously we've got an ear coming out from the left hand side of the head. That's angling up and to the left. It's a little bit of a curve and then it goes to a point. And then the underside or going to the underside, we've got a curve which kind of straightens out. Now, you know, I'm not looking to paint this particular sheep's portrait particularly. Um, I just want to get a pretty decent drawing of a sheep in place. So let's uh, do the other ear, which comes up and then levels out along the top edge, curves at the end comes down at a kind of diagonal angle and then makes its way more or less horizontally back towards the head. The eye I won't include for the moment, but we know it's going to be about here. And then the, the face kind of, or the right hand edge of the face comes down at that sort of angle. There's going to be another eye here somewhere. And that side of the face is kind of coming in at a little bit of a, um, more rapid angle and then there's kind of the bridge of the nose coming down here so I'm really just looking at the biggest shapes I'm not worrying about details at all at the moment now when we look at the kind of silhouette of the mouth it's a bit of a lump there the bottom of the mouth is around about there and then it curves there so I've just checked the reference and if I measure the distance from the tip of the ear to the tip of the other ear and compare that to the distance from the bottom of the chin to the top of the center of the head the ear span is a roughly 25 20 percent longer and that's about the same as my drawing so i'm doing okay there so now we come on to the body so if i just pull back a little bit with the camera again i'm not going to draw the fleece you know too perfectly at this stage but on the left hand side it kind of comes down around about there initially and then as we move over to the right the line of the back keeping it kind of fluffy and wriggly is um, coming up at a slight angle as we head over to the right it comes up almost as high at the peak uh, to the top of the ear but not quite and then it kind of angles down that sort of angle something along those lines like that so you know very simple treatment but now the next thing we need to do is look at the height of this head and see how that compares to kind of the bottom of the chest the bottom of the fleece directly below the head if i do that that's about one head depth so i can put a little mark there just to put me in the right ballpark so as we come down the left hand side, the fleece kind of curves underneath. 
and uh, then it kind of picks back up a little bit. There's a little bit of a recess. There's kind of a dark area in under here. We've got the top of this other leg. And uh, then the belly comes back here somewhere. And then we can begin to put some legs in. So I'm going to do this leg first left side of which more or less lines up with the tip of that ear vertically. So we can come down here. And then there's a bit of a lump where the knee is. A lower leg. And the back of the leg there. And then part of the reason I chose this particular animal is because it does have its other leg off the ground. It's kind of mid walk or this particular photo, I should say. So that other leg comes in here. It's a lump for the ankle. And then heads up that way. So we've got the beginnings of a sheep placed in our landscape. So I'm going to add a couple more. Um, and then I'll check back in when we come to the painting. So what I've done is in addition to the first sheep, I've put the rear end of a second sheep just kind of peeking in out of frame. And the idea there is, you know, when you're out on out in the countryside or whatever, you know, the animals don't line up perfectly, you know, for the perfect photo or for, for the perfect painting. So I always think it's quite a nice idea just to include some kind of element of spontaneity that you've just kind of so you've just kind of wandered into this scene it's not perfect it's not perfectly composed um, we've got another animal here just grazing off in the distance so starting to add a sense of depth to the painting because obviously these sheep are all roughly the same size so by having a smaller one there that creates a sense of depth and then to kind of lead the eye off into the distance this way, I've grouped a grazing sheep and another one kind of looking more or less directly at us, kind of standing proud there. So I've got my five animals in place. I quite liked using this fine uh, marker pen. That's pretty cool to use. Um, so now I'm going to come in with my interactive acrylics to paint the animals you know, up to a finished state. Now. I literally just said I was going to get my interactive acrylics, but I've had a second thought. I'm actually going to use, at least to begin with, I'm going to use this little Ink Tense travel set. So this is um, Ink Tense watercolour, and when you put this down, it forms a waterproof layer. And the reason I'm going to give that a go is the other day I actually completed this painting. So. This is entirely ink tense with a little bit of the fine line marker that I've been using today. And I really enjoyed you know, the kind of colour scheme. So as you can see, this is kind of a surreal painting. We've got these sheep emerging from this sort of huge, I think this is a fuchsia plant uh, that I copied from the garden or was inspired by in the garden. And um, they're kind of emerging from the undergrowth, the giant undergrowth. And, you know, the, the fleece itself is coloured with the same colours as the background colour. So they're, they're almost kind of chameleon sheep, if you like. Um, but I really like this colour scheme. And it occurred to me that I really like using the interactives on top of conventional acrylic. If you've seen some of my other videos, I do that quite a lot. But I don't think I've ever painted with ink tents on top of acrylic. So I'm going to give that a go first of all. So I'm going to begin by taking this little round water brush and uh, just grabbing some of the ocean blue that I've got here. And we'll use this to just put down. Uh, now, um, I think it will dry OK, but it's actually, you know, as you would perhaps expect, the, the dried conventional acrylic is a very slippery, slick surface. So I'm not sure how well this stuff is going to cover the underlying yellow, underlying yellowy green. You know, we'll, we'll persist for a little bit and see how it goes. I quite like the effect, I must say. So the, the background acrylic layer has been put down with a big brush, big decorating brush. 
and um, you can see there's some texture within that layer and this um, thin layer of the ink tents is picking out that underlying texture in a really interesting way so providing once this dries it's well bonded to the acrylic um, I think it's going to be kind of a cool effect it's certainly a new effect for me and uh, in general in art if, it, if it's new to me then it's uh, I, I quite like it um, so put a bit of uh, the same color there for those on that rear leg or rear legs and we'll do the same for the animal on the right and then I'm going to continue in that vein with the animal over here but I'll put the paint down a little less uh, dark a little thin, bit of a thinner layer because these animals are obviously a bit more distant so I can be a bit more subtle with the color that I put down so whoops so, so general rule um, you know things get fainter as they go off into the distance well that first layer of blue isn't completely dry but it's on its way so what I'm going to do next is I've switched to a flat water brush and I'm just picking up this yellow ochre color I think it's yellow ochre it's pretty similar um, I'm going to use this as a mid-tone um, on the fleece and again obviously these textures are going to come through and that might be quite helpful for creating the illusion of of wool of a fleece because obviously highly textured surface just trying to get a little more intensity of pigment yeah, a bit more coverage and then while that layer is wet I think what I'm going to do is pick up um, some of this orange put some of that in and then we'll pick up um, some burnt umber as well for some of the darker areas Switch back to the yellow ochre for, well, it's, there's still a little bit of the um, burnt umber in there, but uh, we'll sw switch back to the yellow ochre mostly for the moment. And I'll just, well, that's more burnt umberish, but uh, that's okay. We can, uh, there's quite a bit of shadow on that part of the fleece anyway. So I'll, I'll try and do the reverse. I'll put the darker areas in first. And, uh, put some lighter color in in a little bit and then uh, let's just rinse the brush out a moment go back to our yellow ochre thin layer of that kind of let that all run in with the darker color Now just, just to try something a little bit different, I've um, kept what was left on the brush of that yellow ochre. And I've just picked up a bit of cadmium red, so I thought I would um, use that for the first layer of the fleece um, on these animals. Yeah, it's a little bit of an unusual choice because 
generally speaking, warm colors we use in the foreground. But, um, you know, definitely in experimental mode with this painting. So happy to give it a whirl. And I'll just continue that color across into the neighboring animal's fleece as well. Certainly getting some you know, interesting textures arising as the paint's drying and moving around and working its way over the top of the underlying acrylic. Now for this um, animal off in the distance, I'm just going to leave that for the moment because I'm, I want to make that one quite pale and grey and I don't think there's going to be any way I can cover that dark blue background with the ink tent. So again, I'm going to let this uh, second application of paint dry and then we'll see where we are. Well I've given uh, the paint a good amount of time to dry now so I'm just going to kind of rub it with my finger a bit and so the blue is, lifts off a little bit but I don't think it's I think that's more just the nature of the color the other the yellow ochre that's not going anywhere really. Um, let's try this one yeah it does lift off a little bit so it's almost feels almost like putting I guess it's like putting down watercolor onto a slick surface so I think um, interesting little experiment but I'm going to go to my interactive acrylics now to finish the painting so I've got some cadmium yellow light burnt umber ultramarine blue alizarin crimson and tinting white so I'm going to start off with a flat brush a bit of the blue bit of the burnt umber. Let's get a little bit more of that burnt umber. And um, we will begin by darkening the uh, right hand side of this foreground sheep. And my intention at the moment is to leave some of the um, some of the ink tents showing. Can darken that ear as well. So this is just a flat synthetic brush I've got here. Put a bit of this colour at the top of that leg and the top of this leg as well. And then it's really very dark uh, at the top of the hind legs too. And some of that darkness kind of continues into the fleece. And then this other animal, there's a bit of shadow in under there. Just dry brush a little bit of this colour across that leg as well. And in fact, the lower parts of the other legs. So that's going to leave a little bit of that ink tense blue showing through. Now let's see what happens when we lightly spray the painting with water. This could be a disaster. We'll see if the ink tense is, uh, goes anywhere. No, it seems to be staying put. So that's allowing me to just blend some of that dark colour across the face and then um, we can do something similar just lightly put in a little bit of that dark color on the face of this animal I'll darken the top of that leg and that one same for the rear legs there as well and then the question is, do I want to go any darker for the neighboring animal? Um, I'm not sure I want to do any more to that one, actually. So I think I'm going to leave that one as it is. So let's um, add a bit of uh, lightness to the fleece of this foreground sheep. So I've just washed my brush out. There's still a little bit of the blue and the burnt umber on there, not much. Um, I'm just dragging the paint, uh, the brush through the tinting white. So let's um, start to add some lighter color onto this still 
damp surface of the painting. Now, often uh, in my paintings, I don't really include any outlines, but for this particular painting, I don't mind if those black marker lines remain visible um, because, you know, this is very much a sort of surreal, expressive interpretation uh, of both the landscape and the sheep. And, and what I'm doing here, as you can see, is I'm just being quite considered with the direction of my brush strokes. And because I'm kind of working wet in wet and this tinting white is reasonably translucent, what I'm doing is I'm just picking out the big shapes and um, of the fleece, capturing the general direction in which the wool is falling over the body of the animal. And I'm hoping that some of that underlying ink tent, some of the underlying uh, acrylic paint texture is going to do a lot of the work for me. Uh, and so far, I'm actually reasonably happy with the effect I'm getting. And then we can do something similar for the animal next to the one I just painted. And then again, we can move across to the other animals um, over on the left hand side of the painting, just adjusting my uh, reference on the computer screen while, while I'm chatting. And I think what I'll do is I'll actually just spray that part of the painting with water because um, I want to, you know, make things fairly subtle back here, soft edges. I don't want the highlights to be too bright. And then while I've got the colour on the brush, um, I may as well just add some white. It's probably not going to be enough to cover the blue background, but I may as well just fill in this little distant animal with a bit of white. Well, the next thing I've done is just uh, drag most of the white off of my brush and then added a little bit of the ultramarine blue and what I thought I would do is simply use some of this to put a little bit of cast shadow in under this animal and we'll do we'll do the same over here for the friend just to sort of place those two on the ground a little more clearly. Um, let's do something similar in the foreground, but I'll change the direction of the brush strokes. So I've just cleaned my brush out again. I'm just going to grab a bit of the, the burnt umber and mix it into that white I had there 
put a little bit of the alizarin in, touch of the yellow. And uh, once again, I'm just going to spray this part of the painting with water. And I uh, just want to add a few areas of kind of mid shadow. I don't mind that some of the yellowy background is showing through. Um, it's kind of in keeping with the the other sheet painting I showed you earlier, but um, I think there's a, there was a little bit too much uh, before. So that's, that's there, and then we can darken this part of the, the fleece here. A few little bit of bits of texture in. Now for most of this painting, I don't plan to go super detailed, but I, want, I do want to add a few more details to the, the main animal here. So I've switched to a barely diluted mixture of the blue and the burnt umber. And I'm also now using a little round brush. And I'm just using this brush to put in a few areas of dark shadow, just refine the drawing of the head a little bit where, um, where needed. So for example, over the bridge of the nose there, there's a little bit of darkness. And then it's quite dark on the end of the face there. Now the, the painting is still quite wet, so I'm not quite getting the intensity of dark that uh, I would like, but that's okay at the moment because I can come back in once the thing's dry. And in fact, I can probably use that to my advantage if I just, because I can put in a few little dark areas here, which will um, have nice soft edges. So just putting in a few of the deeper shadows in, in the fleece. then can we add any others? Yes. So um, there's also, there's quite a hard, not a hard, but a, quite a strong line of shadow here. So when you're working wet and wet like this, you sometimes end up putting down a bit of paint and also lifting off a bit of the underlying paint as well. But, you know, as, as mentioned, it's, that can be a good thing. Darken in there. All right, well, I've switched to a bit of pure titanium white now, um, and I will let the head completely dry before I go in and do the final details on the face. But I just want to add some highlights on the fleece and the the titanium white covers much better than the tinting white, you know, by design. Nothing, nothing wrong with either of the whites, but um, yeah, they've each got their uses. So just putting in a few flicks to kind of solidify the fleece a little bit and add to the description of the texture we've got.
and then we'll as you know as we have been throughout the painting we'll come across to the neighboring animal And then I, I will let that dry completely now, I think, before I come in and do some details on the face. Now, for the eyes of the main animal, I've just mixed up a little bit of um, titanium white with some of the cadmium yellow and just a touch of the alizarin crimson. And what I'm doing is um, just adding a couple of little touches of that where the eyes are going to be and then the painting is I think it's pretty much dry now so what I want to do is come back in with the marker pen that I used right at the very start so because I've just applied paint to the eyes I'm going to leave those for the moment but um, the rest of the head I can work on and you know what I'm going to do is just add a few little characterful lines where I think it's going to help the, the image overall. I can add some hatching to help describe the form. And this technique of going back to the very first step right at the end of the painting or towards the end of the painting is um, something I really like. I like the sort of uh, circular nature of it. I think writers often you know, use that uh, technique in their novels. They introduce a theme. Uh, you see it in movies as well. Um, introduce a theme right at the beginning and then that returns at the end. So put some nostrils in there, that kind of seam that appears on the upper lip. And I mentioned earlier that I didn't get this area quite dark enough so I can come in and just Put a, an extra bit of definition in there. And then I don't want to, you know, re-complete the line that I've partly obscured when it comes to the fleece. But again, I can just enhance certain areas with, with the pen. And I think the paint is perhaps still a little bit damp because um, I am uh, struggling to put down a dark mark in certain areas. But, you know, on the whole, it's um, still working OK. Add a few little bits of texture to the fleece here. And then if we move across to the tail of this animal, Definitely needs to be a little bit more uh, in the way of descriptive line here because some of the form has got left a little bit. Sorry, has become obscured, I, I meant to say. So while I definitely want to enhance uh, some of the descriptive lines, as just mentioned here, certainly don't want to go too crazy because yeah, this is the focus of this part of the painting. Um, 
so it's in yeah it's incidental really that this rear end is kind of you know peeked in from the from the right but um just need a little bit more detail than what we've got at the moment See if we can do these eyes. That one worked fairly well. Do something similar over here. So let's take a look at the finished paintings. Here's the painting that I showed you earlier in the video. I'm going to call this one the Future Flock. And then the painting from today's demo, I'm going to call Under the Deep Blue Sky. So I'd be interested to hear you know, which of these two paintings you prefer. If you'd like to purchase the originals, they are available. You can just drop me an email to info at mikejory.co.uk or if you want to click the link in the description below then you can get a zoom inable look at the high resolution images and you can also purchase prints and so forth direct from my website anyway hope you really enjoyed this video please remember to like the video and i hope to see you next sunday for the next episode of the sunday art show thanks very much for watching